I remember coming home from work feeling completely exhausted. And I thought to myself, what's a 20 minute nap gonna hurt? Two hours later, I felt a tap on my shoulder. Deb, weren't you going to mind map your book tonight? I was, and I will. So I grabbed my flip chart papers, my colored markers and tape, and I headed to the basement. The next thing I knew, it was 3 a.m. I needed to be up at six and work at eight. I contemplated, do I take the three hours? I woke up feeling invigorated and full of energy. And that night when I came home, my husband said, you know those papers downstairs? Was that all in your head? Yes, I said. It was all the questions I needed to find answers to for my readers. Each flip chart paper represents a mind map, a simple, colorful drawing with a main focus with many branches of ideas. You see, light bulb ideas are great, but not when they're stuck in your head. A mind map allows me to get what I think, ink what I think about, expand ideas in an organized way. And in a matter of a few hours, I was able to mind map my book. Imagine what you could do. Had I only learned this in high school and university. Now, how many of you love to take notes? In school, we're taught to think linearly, writing in one color, that monochrome. And if you ask someone who was studying their notes, they might describe it as boring. And what happens when you're bored? You get disengaged, your brain shuts down, and it doesn't retain information. And you're going to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Now, by another show of hands, how many of you like to doodle or draw pictures when you listen to someone speak? Great, you've already started on the path to mind mapping. And with mind mapping, you can draw a simple drawing which allows for brainstorming ideas, problem solving, retention, recall, and organizing ideas, and presenting ideas with clarity and confidence. People often wonder how others have sparks of insight. Say, they're so lucky. It was Louis Pasteur who once said, chance favors the prepared mind. Now let me help you prepare your mind with the tool of mind mapping. Mind mapping can be used in academics, professionally, in everyday life, such as preparing a resume, creating a thesis, planning your next vacation, and even what's for dinner. So managing your time and taking control. Our brains think like popcorn popping. We have 50 to 70,000 thoughts in a day. Capture those ideas into your awareness. And the mind map allows you to form a map or a blueprint to make sense of all those ideas. Using mind mapping could save a lot of people from the affliction of BSO. That's right, bright, shiny object syndrome. And I'm sure no one here suffers from BSO. Mind mapping engages both sides of the brain, allowing you to think in whole brain. The right hemisphere is there for processes, rhythm, images, recognizes faces, colors, and that's where our imagination sits. The left side of the brain is for logic, numbers, words and patterns, analysis. This is where linear thought is. You want to be careful not to label yourself as right or left brained as you limit what you believe you're capable of. Don't half brain anything. If you're going to do anything, do it with your whole brain. Whole brain thinking allows you to see the big picture and also pay attention to the small details. When it comes to mind mapping, it is helpful to get your ideas out of your head and onto paper and leave it alone for a short period of time. Experts suggest that you should work on a problem until you have solved the problem or get stuck in finding the solution. By doing this, you give your brain an opportunity to relax. Creative breakthroughs, moments of insight, are often referred to as aha moments, or as one of my clients calls it, a Deborah moment while vacuuming. Now, I'm not sure household chores are considered relaxing. These moments tend to occur when you're relaxed and doing things that bring you joy or happiness. 
and don't involve a lot of brain power, like taking a walk in nature, taking a shower, going for a run, or listening to music. By allowing ideas to incubate or percolate, you can focus inwardly and think about different perspectives rather than unproductive ideas. Your brain loves to predict what's next and search for answers. It was Dr. Joe Dispenza that said, nothing gets the brain more excited than assimilating knowledge and experiences. I think this is why I love neuroscience and learning how we can rewire the brain to create new neural pathways. At first, you might be a bit resistant to the idea of mind mapping because it's new to you. And when you understand how our brain works, you will realize how you can train your brain to create new neural pathways where your behaviors become automatic and recall much easier. So why should you create new neural pathways? When you think and feel a certain way, you strengthen the circuitry in the brain and you can focus on forming and strengthening habits and behaviors that serve you versus prevent you from living and leading a life that you want. I like to use the analogy metaphor of a wheelbarrow. Now I imagine neural pathways as grooves, well-worn paths in our brain. And if I take a wheelbarrow and travel the same path, it will become worn or even form a rut. And in order to create a new path or get out of the rut, you need repetition. You need to travel the path many times for a new neural pathway to be formed. And as brain cells communicate along that pathway with increased frequency, messages travel to the brain faster and faster, and it becomes automatic. And as you review your mind map, you are creating and traveling the same path with your wheelbarrow, creating deepening the grooves in the brain. And the more times you travel the path, the less resistance. And each time you review information, you are reinforcing the path. Tony Buzak, the father of mind mapping, suggests in his book, The Mind Map Book, that for every hour that there is study, you review your mind map for 10 minutes after drawing it, for 10 minutes. After 24 hours, for two to four minutes. One week later, two minute review. One month later, another two minute review. And after six months, Two minute review and after one year, you guessed it, another two minute review. And instead of only reviewing the original mind map, what he suggests is that you draw out your mind map from memory and then compare the two and add in the missing pieces. This way you are strengthening the pathway to this knowledge and you store it in your long term memory. It is said that the greatest thinkers and artists in history, Da Vinci, Picasso, Einstein, use both sides of the brain using words, symbols, images to create their masterpieces. And the fact that they did means you can too. No artistic ability is necessary. Unlock your potential with a simple drawing. Mind mapping allows us to chunk down complex concepts and organize our thoughts. I mapped out my book in one night. I put up eight flip chart pieces of paper on the wall and got started. I was able to create chapters, themes, brain dump ideas and concepts and stories. And I already knew those. And then built upon them thinking about the questions my reader would ask along with who, what, when, where, and how. The papers on the wall filled up. This tool is efficient in saving time from writing everything out. You can capture relevant keywords and concepts. Our brain can process images quicker using the radiant thinking versus linear thinking. With our imagination, the brain thinks in pictures. It gives you a better understanding of how our brain can comprehend a picture. I want you to think about a hummingbird. Now a hummingbird can flap its wings a couple times, equivalent to 13 milliseconds. That's how quickly our brain processes images. In the studies that I have reviewed, 
Groups that were taught how to mind map had significant retention of information after one week, better recall of ideas, and improved focused attention. When working with linear text, a part person is often multitasking, distracted. They might find themselves flipping pages, looking to connect concepts and finding answers. The pictures can help increase attention and recall, but mind mapping allows you to capture everything on one page. It is the best way to gather, organize, and display complex information, improving someone's recall by 15% and boosting productivity by 20%. Now you start with a central concept in the center with an image using at least three different colors. Our notes, again, are usually one color, that monotone, monochrome. Color and visuals make our words come alive, and colors capture and engage our attention, and they improve our comprehension. Now, radiant thinking away from the central concept using lines and branches, and you can thicken the lines or branches to emphasize important points. You put single keywords, or sometimes I use phrases on lines and branches. You add images as our brain, again, thinks in pictures. You will discover and link associations, discover dis connections amongst these ideas. Mind mapping tool allows you to see concepts from a different vantage point. It was Buzan who said, the more one learns and gathers new data in an integrated, radiating, organized manner, the easier it is to learn from. Now, I want you to get excited about learning something new. So let's debunk the myth that you need to have artistic ability to mind map. Now, let's mind map about mind mapping. Mastery comes from repetition taking our wheelbarrow and developing those narrow pathways, mine up your masterpiece and become the genius that you are. So now you're gonna start with a circle in the middle of the, the center of your piece of paper. Main theme, concept, for this demonstration, we're gonna talk about mind mapping to reinforce that repetition to build those grooves in your brain. Then we, from that, we have branches that radiate from the central concept. These are all the sub-concepts. And you're going to use a different color for each section. Lines and that radiate away, you can have thicker lines for the emphasis, thinner, for just for the concepts of words, phrases that come off of that central concept that you have. Then you can use symbols. I have a tree here, a house as an example, just how simple the drawing needs to be. And you want to be using more than three colors. Again, because our brain is captured by the attention of color. And you're going to do the basic ordering and going around in a radiating fashion. My book started with eight flip chart pieces of paper. It turned into 10 chapters, 266 pages, and a bestseller. Imagine what you could do with some paper, some colorful pens, and the mind mapping in your toolbox. No artistic ability required. Now that's an idea worth sharing.